Hello, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at how we can add fonts to Inkscape, including dingbat images like the ones I've used in the corner here. So stick around. Whether you're using Inkscape for your own personal craft projects or for commercial purposes, at some point you're going to better want to use different fonts. If you're using Inkscape for designing t-shirts, logos or for low content publishing, you need to be sure that the fonts that you're using in your designs can actually be used for commercial purposes. For fonts that are already in Inkscape, you Google it, look up the font and find out whether or not you're allowed to use it for commercial purposes or whether you have to buy a license. Um, personally, I tend to just download free for commercial use fonts. I want to show you a website that I use for downloading fonts. Um, it's called 1001fonts.com. So on the website, at the top here, we've got a selection of different styles that we can use. So we can just search through these, click on ones that we like or think might be appropriate to the style of font that we want. And it will uh, display fonts that match those criteria. Underneath that, you've got a section where you can just stick in some text that you want to that you want to display underneath so you can see how the font looks with the writing that you're going to be using it for. Next to that, you've got a button to select only fonts that use characters. So you get fonts called Dingbat fonts, which are made up of images. So it'll re reject those. Next to that, you've got a little price tag. If you want to have fonts that are free for commercial use, click this and it will only display fonts that are free to be used commercially. Down here, we've got different colored price tags. So if we come over, click on the free for commercial use, you'll notice that they're all green down the side now. So it's only showing free fonts that we can use commercially now. Next to that, we've, we've got a slider so we can uh, size our example text to whatever size we fancy. We've then got a button for swapping uh, foreground and background colors. Oh, we can actually change the colors with this. So we can come in change the colors. We can swap them around the other way. We go back to black and white. Uh, we've then got how many fonts are displayed per page. So if we click down here, you can choose between 10, 20 or 50 fonts per page. We've then got a box for sorting our uh, fonts. So if we click on this one, we can do it by date added, trending, popularity, alphabetically or number of styles. I think that's everything we need to be looking at there. At the top, we can search for a particular font. If you had a, a font that you knew the name of and you wanted to find it, you could put it in the top. Or we've got font categories. If we click on font categories, this drops down a large list of different styles and fonts that we can use. Dingbats. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Dingbat fonts are images rather than actual letters. So if we look in here, we click on flower, take a look at the flower one. And we get different fonts that come up with flower designs. What else can we look at? Say in here, say we wanted an elegant style, we could click on elegant. Up come some elegant styles. So this black chancery looks like quite a nice font. So if I wanted to download this uh, so I can use it in Inkscape, we'd come over, click on the download opens up a save window. We can choose where we want to save our file to and we can click save. Once we've saved it, we can show in folder. We can then right click on it and we can come down and extract all. I'm going to leave the extracted file in the same place as my zip file. So I'm just going to press extract and then that'll open up our file. So in here, we've got a text file. Uh, the text file generally just goes through licensing what you can use it for. So make sure you read this before you use anything for commercial purposes. And the other one is our actual font. So this is a true type font. So if we double click on this, this pops open our window so we can see the font that we've downloaded. Some nice examples of the writing. And up the top, we can put install. I've already got this one installed. So do I want to replace it? I'll click yes. 
So once you've installed your font, you'll need to uh, make sure that you close down Inkscape. And then when you reopen Inkscape, if we select our text tool, so now if we click up here, bring down our fonts, if we go back to the top, oops, sorry, we should have Black Chancery down here. So if we type, let's drag that lot out of the way. So if we type something in here, we have our new font. So that's basically all there is to it. And one last thing I just wanted to, to go over was when I've downloaded the font or the Dingbat font, which included this floral design in the corner. Um, each letter of the font is a single path. So this would have all been one path. So I've had to break it apart. I'll quickly show you how to do that. If we come over to the side, just going to click here and get the text tool. Click here, put a capital B. Then I'm going to go up and find the font that this was on. Victorian Designs 3. So we click on this. Sorry, I've got to select our B first. Select our B. So now I'm just going to stretch that out. So I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions and drag it up just to make it a nice size. So at the moment, this is a font. So first thing we need to do is come up to path, object to path, which turns it into a path, but this is likely to be grouped. So then we need to come up, ungroup it. it hasn't actually taken it apart, but it's, if there was any groups there, it's removed the grouping. And then we can come up to path and down to break apart, which is break it into the individual elements. Then what you can do is click off. If we hold down shift, we can just come in, click on all the stalks or stems, whatever they'd be. We can color those a brown. Click off again, hold down shift. We can select the uh, leaf sections. So then we can color these. I used a radial gradient in the design that I've got there. So if we click on radial gradient, actually we've got it here. So as you notice at the moment, it's doing a radial gradient separately on each leaf. This is because they're not grouped together. So if we come up and group them, get our color back to normal, then we go back in to a radial gradient, and then we can choose the gradient down here. And as you can see, it's colored it in for us. Uh, the other thing I did was petals of the flower. So we just go around, hold down shift, select all of these and give it a radial gradient. We choose the pink that we got there. Oh, forgot to forgot to uh, group them again, but you get the gist. And then we can do the same in here. We open it up a bit, hold down shift, select each of the individual elements group them together this time group and we can then go radial gradient and the one that I think I used for that so that's how you can take a um, dingbat design and color it in so I think that covers most of what I wanted to look at if you've got any questions just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video